Hello everyone and welcome to How Do I Start a Career in Robotics, a panel discussion hosted by the UK Robotics and Autonomous Systems Network as part of our Robotics Summer Showcase. Please welcome your chair for today's discussion, joint lead of the Skills and Education in Robotics and Autonomous Systems Program and Managing Director of CyberSelves, Richard Waterstone. Thanks Claire and, uh, and welcome to How Do I Start a Career in Robotics. Um, as Claire said, I, I'm, I'm Richard Wardstone, and I'm really pleased uh, to be joined by panelist Philippa Glover, who's Managing Director uh, of CNC Robotics, Duncan Russell, uh, Head of External Collaborations at Ocado Technology, Melanie Zimmer, who's a Research Assistant at Loughborough University, and Marcus Nemitz, uh, Assistant Professor at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Uh, Philippa, Duncan, Melanie and Marcus are, are here to answer all your questions today. And, and hopefully tell us a bit about their own pathways into robotics and, and their careers in, in robotics since then. Um, the event today is part of a broader effort by UK RAS, um, along with kind of robot competitions and other events in, uh, in, in schools and, and about the country that uh, UK RAS does to kind of really to help promote robotics and, and help them um, in any way that we can really to open uh, robotics up as a career path. Uh, as well as um, giving some, giving you some some advice and kind of pointers as to how you might join the industry yourself and and what qualifications and skill sets uh, might be helpful for you to develop, what we'd really like to do today is to is to kind of try to demystify uh, robotics for you all a bit and hopefully show how um, robotics is actually a kind of really large and expanding sector with all sorts of different kinds of jobs and uh, you know in robotics and, and different pathways into the industry and the, the world has changed so much in the last year uh, with robotics an ever burgeoning industry now that's going to play you know certainly going to play a major role um, as we all emerge from the pandemic robots and autonomous systems are looked at very differently than they were just a year ago where people used to think of robots in terms of kind of Boston dynamic videos of scary killer robots waiting to take over the world. And um, people think much more now, you know, in terms of robots disinfecting hospitals, supporting healthcare workers, uh, delivering food and, and doing, you know, much more of the kind of more repetitive and kind of heavy lifting, kind of heavy labor jobs in our factories and warehouses. Uh, collaborative robotics or cobotics, uh, as it's uh, as it's also called, is also transforming industry, which is kind of enabling a more agile manufacturing model that's considerably cheaper, um, easier to use, and more flexible than than what went before. So that more and more companies are now adopting robots. Uh, that, that, so there's there's little doubt really that robotics is definitely on the rise, and and that it's going to be a really exciting and uh, and growing industry to work in over the next few years. So um, there are a kind of many different ways into the industry and, uh, and, and many different jobs, as, as we were saying. And, you know, if you want to, if, you, if, if what you want to be is kind of soft software engineers, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. We're obviously going to need more and more developers in the coming years. Um, but if not, you know, I, I think something that we really want to kind of get over today is that there's also a lot of other ways into robotics and other skill sets that might be really uh, helpful to you. Um, you know, and when we kind of look forward to the workplace of 2030, you know, as well as coding, you know, it's also, you know, the, so, the more kind of so-called human skills like creative problem solving and teamwork, collaboration, critical thinking, you know, kind of these are also the skills that we're going to need to thrive in the coming machine age. Um, they're kind of skills to help us work alongside, you know, with robots to solve problems in the in the workplace, you know, in our environments and in our lives. Um, I'm personally quite new to the field. Um, I, I came into robotics through technical education and, and skills training initially, uh, having founded one of the UK's first online video platforms many years ago. And, uh, and working in academic publishing and course design. I'm a, I'm a social scientist, apparently, uh, apparently, originally. Uh, my master's was in social anthropology. And even though, but even though I didn't have a kind of straight science background, let alone one in robotics or computer science, I have been able to thrive in the industry. And I've really enjoyed working with roboticists, such as those on the panel today. 
um, and working in an industry that you know now has so much to offer the world. Uh, being involved in a successful robotic startup over the last couple of years has all also been kind of really enjoyable and, and rewarding for me. Um, more importantly, let me hand over to the actual accomplished roboticists on our panel today. Um, after everyone's introduced themselves and let us and let us all know kind of a bit more about their own career paths into robotics. Uh, please, everyone, please do ask us questions that um, you know by by putting them in chat or raising your hand and um, virtually, and we can uh, we can put those to the panel. Um, so so maybe uh, Philippa Glover would be a good place to start. Uh, Philippa. Yeah, thanks, Richard, and, and what a great, great introduction and kind of background and, you know, um, so I'm the managing director here at CNC Robotics and we're a, a small business based in Liverpool City region and we're known as a robot integrator. So we basically work with manufacturers to understand their manufacturing challenges and design and build bespoke robotic systems. Um, we're a 10 year old company um, owned by a husband and wife team um, and there's 19 of us um, and we we really do span sectors. So we work with individuals who who make props for the for, for large scale films such as Mission Impossible, Avengers um, by using robots at advanced milling machines, something that actually is really quite creative and quite different to the applications that often people think about in robotics. Um, but then we also work with people in the space industry, in aerospace, in general automotive, electric vehicle, in defence, and probably any sector in between. Um, and, and that's because as a company, what we specialise in is turning robots into what we class as kind of advanced machining systems. So driving robots accurately with software to be able to do machining processes. Um, I'm probably similar to Richard, so actually I'm not a I'm not an engineer, you know, probably the, a little bit of the fraudster in the room. I'm actually a chemist. So I started my career because I had a I had a huge passion for manufacturing and, and how things were made and put together. So I, from a very young age, had a lot of experience and, and was given work experience at large scale chemical companies. So worked worked at Crodo and, and decided to do chemistry at university and went on to do my master's in computational fluid dynamics and and studied lots of reactions from a, from a chemical perspective and, and started my career in, in the FMCG world, um, working in, in research and development teams and leading those teams and, and then kind of continued to, to develop my career in that R&D perspective before given an opportunity to move into operations. So the factory floor, managing a lot of that factory operational activity, both from a design perspective, but also from a quality perspective. And that's something that was really quite empowering um, and it drew, drew, drew out all of the knowledge I had from an R&D perspective and my ability to think strategically. And, and that's something that I kind of soon realised I really enjoyed that element. And, and that's the bit that um, I was really good at um, and was able to harness that and to, to grow into, into becoming a manager and director of a, of a small business and, and really being responsible for leading the, de the development of that business and its people. Um, I've been in robotics now for three years um, and, you know, absolutely couldn't think about of any, being anywhere else. I absolutely love manufacturing and actually being able to support manufacturers to look at their operations and look at how they can use new technology in an innovative way is something that I'm really passionate about and fortunate to sit on a number of advisory boards, both at a, a, a regional and national level, to really help kind of challenge and, and 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 support the industry to really reach its true potential um, and I think that's where robotics is a great career choice because there isn't um there isn't necessarily a natural step in so if you want to be a doctor you study medicine if you want to be a roboticist or work in robotics there's so many different ways and it's a very multi-skilled cross-functional industry that really enables you to to actually have a really rewarding career um, so yeah, hopefully that's given you a bit of background about me and I'll, I'll pass you over to, to the next panellist. Thanks, Philippa, that's great. Uh, 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 Duncan, would you, would you like to go? Yeah, great. Um, hello, so Duncan Russell. I'm uh, Head of External Collaborations at Arcado Technology and we supply all of the technology behind uh, the Ocado brand, you'll see the Ocado vans uh, in the UK. I know we've got some people from uh, other areas of the world. And um, since Ocado started as kind of a retail company, um, 
that's purely online supermarket, it developed its own technology and we're now actually selling that technology and exporting that globally. So you, you will see that running systems in France, Sweden, Canada, USA, uh, Australia and Japan. Um, and I would just we've, uh, recently got the deliveries going in, in Canada and have been running them in France and Sweden for a while. Very soon they'll be running in, in the States. Um, I, I am an engineer, <laughs> so uh, I, 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 did, I did start with um, a degree in electronic systems engineering, uh, which was uh, quite involved. Uh, it was electronic systems engineering with business and computing which uh, gave me quite a good good footing across uh, a range of technologies. And I pretty much kept that throughout my career. So um, being able to, to jump between technologies, um, I had a, a, a particularly uh, a, a good passion for, for software coming out of uh, that degree uh, and ended up at Philips Research working in mobile communications uh, and actually looking at receiver design and doing some IC design there uh, before, uh, and, and that was that was Philips Research. So I kind of started my career in commercial research, then went into R&D in professional audio, um, doing real-time distributed systems. Uh, then uh, I went back to university and did a PhD, and that PhD was in grid computing. Uh, which is effectively is the forerunner for cloud computing now. Um, and the target area for that was actually with Rolls-Royce in aircraft engine diagnostics. Uh, and they were looking at big data before people were calling it big data. So that was kind of a good introduction to, to you know, the larger scale of technologies, uh, where I then went into research on systems architecture, um, which is robust in integration of kind of information systems and services and, and the machinery in military systems. Then medical imaging um, in a, a small startup. So that was back to R&D uh, and then R&D in risk analysis. Uh, and now I'm kind of back at back in research uh, at Cardo Technology, uh, having taken Part of that experience was running um, research projects and, and larger collaborations. Um, so when I joined Ocado, I, I was then um, part of managing the robotics research projects. Uh, in particular, uh, at that time, there were two, two robotics projects, one on uh, manipulation of uh, easily damageable and deformable objects such as fruit and vegetables. So this was where we're picking and packing uh, the, the shopping, um, going from our storage system uh, into a, a customer delivery container. And uh, we recognized that one of the long-term goals was uh, the, the easily damageable items. So uh, that was a collaborative project with some experts in universities and uh, and then the other project was a, a humanoid robot for maintenance assistance, working alongside the maintenance technicians for repair and maintenance of the warehouses. And um, yeah, my, my experience across different areas uh, served me quite well uh, just diving into robotics, as in particular doing systems architecture uh, and image processing. All of those skills are required. I think ro robotics is a very interesting area because it's a very dense, uh, complex system. Um, and on a, it, you, you, can, you can look at a, a very, very large system, an integrated system of lots of different components. And, and a robot is, is a kind of a, a very compact version of all of those disciplines and all of those technologies. Uh, and so we reflect that avocado with uh, specialists in vision, specialists in uh, control and dynamics and kinematics uh, and um, material design for, for soft robotics um, and, uh, and then the real-time system control as well. So um, all of that really goes, goes into um, separate disciplines, but how, how we bring that together as well.
I think I'll, I'll hand over to somebody else. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. That's fascinating. Great, great stuff. Thank you. Um, uh, Melanie, would you, would you like to go next? Yeah, so I hope you, you can hear me. I hope it's still working, the microphone. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hi, my name is Melanie. I'm 32 years old. Um, I'm originally from Germany, but I've been living and working in the UK for almost seven years now. My background is originally in math and computer science, and I currently work as a research assistant with the Intelligent Automation Center at Loughborough University. Yeah, I just want to talk a bit about my background as well and how I ended up where I am today, because I honestly never thought I would do anything uh, related to robots or programming when I was younger. So why is that? Well, back at school, the only computer related class that um, we actually had was a study group with just like a handful of people where we learned how to use Microsoft PowerPoint and Microsoft Word. So computers or programming in general were not really a thing and therefore not something I thought about um, at that time. So I liked languages, I liked arts, I liked math. So these were the major subjects I kind of focused on during my final years at school. Um, after I graduated from school in 2008, um, I only knew that I wanted to, do, to study something either related to, to arts or to math, because these were my two favorite subjects at school. Um, but often with arts, you will find that there is a certain deadline to submit a portfolio. And I simply didn't manage to do that on time. So this is why I decided to go ahead and study applied math. Um, I didn't know what I could or I would do after I would finish. Um, I just knew that uh, I wouldn't want to focus on finance or insurance math or become a math teacher, as a lot of people assume, um, as I didn't think um, I would enjoy that. Um, and during my bachelor's actually in math, I got introduced to the basics of uh, computers and programming. Um, because one way of practically using math is done through writing some codes so the computer can do the number crunching for you. Um, in the end, I enjoyed actually this so much more than math that I decided to study software technology for my master's, um, where the focus was on hardware and software um, aspects of, of computing. And during my final year uh, of my master's program, which was in 2014, I came to the UK to do my master thesis in the area of augmented reality for manufacturing in a research institute down in London. And after I finished my master's, I continued working there for another two years before I then became a full-time student again um, with Loughborough University, uh, where I was doing my PhD then with the CDT, the Center for Doctoral Training in Embedded Intelligence and the Intelligent Automation Center. So yeah, you can think of a PhD as a, another three plus years in-depth academic qualification. And as part of my PhD, which was in mechanical engineering, and this is kind of where the link to robotics or human machine interaction started for me, I investigated how I can use artificial intelligence and in particular um, natural language processing um, in a manufacturing context to build a personal assistant, um, in the form of a chatbot that would help um, the decision making and kind of that would give machines uh, a voice, you could say. Um, I became a research assistant with the university um, where I'm currently supporting a national project. So we work with different universities and industrial partners from across the UK, um, where we also use these technical advances um, such as augmented reality or artificial intelligence to make the processes in um, manufacturing smarter so that we can work um, or that we can make work for manufacturing personnel easier. And as part of that, I'm also doing some research into human robot interaction and collaborative robots. So yeah, that's, that's me. That's great. Melody, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Marcus? There we go. Hello, everyone. Um, so I can only, so first I have to touch on several things. So number one, uh, really nice to, to, to be here and, and talk to you. I'm very excited whenever we talk to, especially to uh, uh, students who haven't decided on where to go now, yet for college, or who want to go to robotics. The, I completely agree with Richard that the human skills are extremely important in robotics because robotics itself is such a multidisciplinary field spanning so many disciplines that you, you interact with other people and that interaction is really important. So human skills is something that is inherently important. 
And then Philippa mentioned at one point that she's a chemist. And I think chemists are probably the best roboticists because they started really the field of soft robotics, and which are these stretchable robots that are squishy and that are inherently safe to interact with. So I think uh, these are um, all uh, fascinating backgrounds. And, and the weirder the background is of a student, uh, the more interesting I think it is. One of, to just before I start talking about myself, one of my colleagues, she did a bachelor degree in fashion design, and now she's doing a PhD at Harvard doing wearable textiles. So the, the, the world of robotics is weird and exciting, and whatever ideas you have, the more creative they are, the better. So there is no really that one entry field. But let me tell you how I got into robotics. So it all started really middle school when I was like maybe 13 years or 12 years old. And there was this kind of club where we were um, allowed to work on remote controlled uh, cars. So that was the first time that I saw a servo motor, you know, getting something drive around and using electronics. And then after that experience, later in high school, I also had the opportunity to work on a project that was focusing on programming microcontrollers. So you literally had these little chips and you could program them and they would do something, which I thought was extremely exciting um, because you literally are sitting there with the computer, you do some lines of code and then the microcontroller outputs voltages, which can drive motors and then something can drive and all of that. So based on these experiences, I decided to study a bachelor in electrical engineering. And then doing that bachelor, I had courses in electronics, analog electronics, digital electronics, microcontrollers, digital signal processing. And that was really when I, I decided I want to continue studying because I found the electronics part of my electrical engineering degree so interesting. And then I decided to go to the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. So I did a master's degree in electronics in there. And there, there was another opportunity where I ran into Professor Adam Stokes, who is a um, professor in, uh, at the University of Edinburgh at the School of Engineering. And there was an opportunity to work for a master thesis on a project that was related to robotics. And after that project, I wanted to do more. And then I applied for something that's called the Center for Doctoral Training, which is in the UK, a center that is four years long the first year is you learn skills that are important for that particular program. And then the next three years you do your PhD. So it's a very specific program. And at the end you get a PhD out of that. And in that PhD, I worked on swarm robotics. So how can you have many low cost robots, many of them, and how can you do they collective tasks? So how can you have three robots moving an object from A to B? Or how can we use that for defense purposes to, for instance, find someone breaking out of a prison, how can you find that person as quickly as possible? And all these aspects, they, they, all these projects have aspects that are mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, physics. And so, so roboticists, when we come all together at conferences, we all have our own expertise. And that's again, where communication comes back in, which is why I agree with Richard so, um, so much, because it's all about interacting with people. So after I did then my PhD, I did my postdoc at Harvard, where I then focused on squishy robots, like you know, like the one that uh, Philippa mentioned, where you um, um, have like stretchable robots and they are very interesting to interact with humans with. And then I applied for faculty positions, and now I'm an assistant professor, and I'm now 31 years old. So I essentially what I did in my career in order to get into robotics is taking on opportunities. Whenever there was an opportunity to do something, some project related work, and with project I mean, you do physically something, you build something, you have a circuit or anything like that. That was great. Now, so in one of the comments that Kevin from the US, he was working on programming Arduinos and, and, and doing these kind of things, perfect. That kind of tinkering is exactly, I think, what brings you into robotics. You know, you start with some kind of project that you find on instructables.com, and then you say, this is what I want to build. And then either you have people around you who can help you with that, or you um, learn that by yourself. But there are so many different uh, opportunities that you have now these days online. So I know that we have like a panel uh, our discussion, I have only two minutes left, but let me use them for, for introducing to some ideas. If you want to go to robotics because you think it's really cool and it's going to be the future, and you know, we're about to, to, to colonize uh, uh, another planet, 
and all of that, which I think will happen, uh, maybe even in my lifetime, then you know that's that's reason enough to go into robotics. If that excites you, that's fantastic. And then you can figure out you know what exactly you want to do in that particular area. But in the UK, we have so many excellent universities in robotics. And if you live, for instance, near London, then look for universities around you and type in after that in your Google search robotics. You will find that a place, a university in your area will have a robotics place because robotics has become so important in the UK and also in the US and everywhere in the world. But the UK is particularly good at it. For instance, if you live in Edinburgh, then go to my old advisor, Adam Stokes, and find him by just typing in University of Edinburgh, robotics, and then you will find people like him, and you approach them, you approach the professors and say, hi, hey, I'm a high school student, middle school student, and I would like to work on some kind of project related to robotics. And whether you believe it or not, when I was a PhD student, we got these requests all the time, and we had middle school students who would come into the lab, would sit down, look at me, and say, what do we do now? And I said, we will now build a circuit. And then they start building it. They have no idea what they're doing, which is great. And then they come up with their own creative ideas, and then they build something. And that is how you get really into robotics, by doing stuff, by actually tinkering around. And I have a few other suggestions that, that you can do. But I will wait for the um, for the question answer um, session. Um, one one thing that I will say though that when people say what is the most important skill that I should learn right now, I know people who say it should be mathematics, and I know people who say it should be electronics, and I, I think it's what you I think what you need to do is really building stuff, just build something, and that will require electronics, mechanical engineering, computer science, math, and all of that. But um, focusing on one single uh, um, skill, I, I personally think that that doesn't really sum up what robotics is all about. And with that, I would like to finish my quick five minute introduction. Thank you. Marcus, that was terrific. Thank you very much. Um, I think, as you say, we are now going on to, I, I don't know um, if we can now go on to a view where we can see uh, audience members and anyone who's raising their hand or, Perhaps, perhaps we can do that in a minute. But first of all, well, Marcus, I see that in, in the chat, um, you've got a question, I think, come straight back saying, uh, do you think approaching universities is the best way to get some experience? I mean, as you've just been discussing, or are there other good projects out there? Yeah, that, that is an excellent question. And I, I think there, there are two things that, that you can do. So number one is, don't be shy about writing professors. We get emails all the time and, 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 you know, and most likely you have to write more than one. So if you write one email, you get a response, you're extremely lucky. You usually have to write four or five emails to the same one professor, and then you get a response. And it has nothing to do that that professor doesn't like you. It's just to do with, you know, teaching, research, service, and all of that. So don't be discouraged by that. Write professors that you like and be consistent with that. So yes, I think that's one of the best ways possible to do that. And the other thing is, Look for opportunities at your school. You might you can talk to teachers and say, hey, I'm interested in robotics. Is there any event? And it is not unusual for schools to ask universities to have like outreach projects. So I, for instance, in my PhD, I would go to middle school with my with Professor Stokes, and we and another uh, PhD student, we would show them 3D printing. So we brought our 3D printers into the school, and then we would 3D print stuff, and then that would be a way to get introduced to um, robotics. So reach out to your teacher and ask whether something like that could be established. And chances are that your school is in some kind of collaboration with the university anyway. Something that in the US has been very um, important is the first robotics challenge. So we know that we have all these kind of sports. We have like football, we have like American football. I should really call it soccer since I'm in the US. But we have all these like different sports and the new sport that we're trying to establish is the first robotics sport and very different to all the other sports where you have to be good at something. If you're not at least 200 pounds, you can't make it into American football. If you're not at least that fast, you can't go to soccer. First is a sport where you have, you have, have to bring zero capabilities. You come there and then you just work in a group together on a robot. And that first robotics um, um, system is already there for middle school, high school, and university level. 
And so this should become a new international sport. And I think last year for the first time, just before the pandemic, there was the first international competition where countries competed with each other. So first robotics is exactly for this, for, for this approach, getting middle and high school students already engaged in robotics. So I would urge you to look into that too. And then instructable.com. That is a web page where people just tinker around a great place to look for projects. But, but, but also in terms of projects, I think it's great to go to the universities, but also don't be afraid to reach out to SMEs like us, so small businesses. You know, I regularly get asked and approached by, you know, teachers, but also students to have a chat. And, and I would agree with Marcus is that don't be put off if, if you don't get a response from the first first call or first email you know people will make time and you know be be persistent that's how i got my first you know work experience in a company and and as a small business even though we're small you know we regularly spend time with with learners and with students to talk about potential projects or or, or open our doors to allow them to see what it's like working in a in a, in a real life i suppose business um where the engineers are, are working on robotics day in day out so yeah, Google is a, is your best friend and you probably will find there'll be a company somewhere on a hidden industrial estate where you can get in contact and, you know, persuade them to give you an opportunity. Thanks, Philip. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, I, and then kind of coming back to the questions in the chat, I've um, got one from Salma asking, uh, what do we think? And, and I know um, everyone has covered this um, a bit in, in, in what they've been talking about, but but maybe we could we could try and answer it again as well. Is that what is the best degree for robotics? Do we think is it electronics or, or mechanical? Oh. I think I think it really depends on on the area of robotics that you want to go into. So I often kind of see kind of robotics in the kind of three three areas. So you've obviously you've, you've often kind of got the the body. So that's the mechanical engineering side. You've got the nervous system, which is kind of the electronics and the electrical engineering. And then you've got the brain, which is the com computer science piece. You know, some people like to be able to kind of do a combination of, 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 of everything. So here in a small business, actually, we have multi-schooled engineers who probably get involved in all of those aspects. So it probably doesn't matter whether they come from a mechanical electronics or a me mechatronics perspective. Um, but probably think about the thing that you're most interested in. Is it the body, you know, of, of the robotics? Is it the nervous system or is it the brain? And that might guide you as to, you know, what would be a good kind of degree to help you in that. And, you know, I suppose, Melanie, you, you made a conscious decision, didn't you, to kind of to study kind of something in that field. So maybe you might be able to give a, a bit of a, a deeper perspective. Um, yeah, I mean, also for me, I, I have to say, I always shied away from uh, from hardware um, because I was, I don't know, it was just something I was a bit, I don't know if afraid is the right word. I had, I think I had respect, I would say. <laughs> um, so, but I, I definitely agree. So it really depends what kind of area um, you would, you know, you are interested in. I think this generally is maybe something, or this is maybe generally something you can, you can think about as well. Just try to think about the things you you like doing but also equally important the things you don't like doing because yeah. I think this will this will help you kind of try to figure out which direction also just um, building up on um, what was said try to also maybe talk to you know your um, some um, your friends or they might actually you know maybe their parents work in a in a field you might be interested in so maybe you can also find links um, uh, there somehow but I definitely agree it's it's good to try to maybe kind of do an internship because you only will find out if you like if you really like something if you if you try it um, and also don't be afraid of just trying something completely different um, yeah but I think so if, yeah I think for me I mean I come from a some math and computer science background so again I had nothing really to do with um, mechanical engineering up to my PhD um, but um, I also I'm I'm now focusing more on the on the brain um, as Philippe has said um, in in my current work so I'm trying to see okay how can we make um, how yeah how can we um, um, kind of just make make the robots a bit smarter in a way or not because also this as Richard mentioned at the beginning this whole idea with collaborative robots um, is um, um, yeah coming up more and more nowadays so that we have people working together with robots in close proximity instead of kind of having having the robot uh, robots kind of caged away um, and also one thing for example that you can look into as well is um, 
um, in, in this field of collaborative robots is um, how can we make these uh, robots um, kind of smart in the sense of um, an artificial skin, for example, so they can um, they can kind of feel if there's some interaction with with the human, but also equally important, we actually look at how how the hum uh, how the human actually behaves um, working with a working with a robot. So we are also actually looking from from this perspective as well. So does the human feel stressed? Um, does the heart rate, for example, go up? Um, does this mean we can kind of slow the robot down a bit to make the human feel more at ease? So there are different ways, different aspects you can you can look into. So the the robotics field is quite um, quite wide, and I would say there is no wrong or right answer. Um, also, as we have seen, there are so many aspects, um, so many backgrounds, um, even here from the panelists, how we ended up in robotics. So. No, absolutely. No, no, thanks, Melanie. And, and that kind of leads quite nicely ready to a question from Christina, just asking kind of, you know, and in the long term, uh, what, what do we feel is the kind of prospect for people without technical um, back backgrounds in, in, in robotics generally? It, I, I yeah, I think there's, I think there's a huge scope of opportunities with especially drawing on social sciences. So, Richard, your 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 background um, is that the society is changing and the way in which we interface with technology is changing. So, as we we really need to have a a technical and non technical kind of strategic approach to to robotics and and the future world that we're going to be living in. Um, and I, I've been you know, privileged to be involved in a, in a number of kind of research kind of activities looking at the societal and kind of ethical impacts of robotics. Um, so there's, there's, there's lots of research and roles, I think, that will be coming more in that area. But likewise, from a business perspective, and if I take you know, us as a, as a small business, in, in our company, we've got you know, sales, marketing activity, which, you know, could draw on kind of the English and creative industries. We've got, you know, financial kind of accountancy needs, you know, as well as kind of operational kind of project management activity. It's not always, you know, a direct technical role. And with any, with any business, you know, there's real opportunities for technical and non-technical to kind of come together and really, you know, build a I suppose cohesive system and when we're when we're actually going through design reviews we actually have everyone in that room so I'm not a classically trained roboticist but I know manufacturing and I also know the strategic side of the business and you get involved in those conversations to have that diversity of thought um, and I think that's that's a an increasing opportunity for, for for you guys at the start of your career to to be that kind of additional kind of voice in in the room and, and have that diversity of thought and background. Um, Duncan, you're um, nodding. I don't know what you think. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll add in um, because yeah, they're definitely uh, the kind of the project. And when you look at the overall project, there are lots of different roles that we have. Um, and yeah, we we were lucky enough on on the second hands project, which was the humanoid robot. Um, as I said, it was working alongside maintenance technicians. So we had a study at one point in in the project to that the robot was capable enough to to um, and this is this is a large robot this is a um, full-size humanoid robot working right alongside people and so we had a study on on how how people could perceive working alongside the robot how useful it was in their work um, how how they responded to the robot and and so that was a very human study it was a technical human study that we uh, we put markers on the people. We we had eye tracking systems. Uh, we did uh, behavioural interviews before and after. Uh, so there there was it was a very robust study, and you know, the people involved were um, involved in robotics, but they they didn't have a robotics background. They they had a humanities background. They they were looking at the human aspect. Uh, and it was uh, it, it was a, a very valuable part of that project to get that, that level of feedback. Uh, and of course, uh, as Philip has said, uh, there, there's there's product managers, there's there's product designers. You, you have to understand uh, is is the robotic system uh, providing the right output. We have um, data scientists, and uh, if you look at data scientist skills, that's uh, there's a big part of that which is understanding the problem 
uh, and that, that, that maps well to where we start using uh, machine learning and AI. And, and so the algorithms are, are actionable within the system. And that can extend beyond the robot. So the robot is going to interact with other autonomous systems. Uh, and so there, there's yeah, lot, lots of those aspects in understanding the, the behavior and kind of sympathy to, to the other parts of the systems. That's brilliant, thanks. And, and, and going quickly, I know we're running out of time a bit, so a question from Siobhan there. Siobhan says, interested in uh, moving into autonomous vehicles kind of in, in industry, basically, and asking how to approach that and what kind of skill sets you, you'd really recommend. Um, I, I can I can take take that one a bit. So um, I kind of just just recently signed a deal with Oxbotica, that's one of our leading companies in the UK that's doing autonomous vehicles. Uh, that's come out of Oxford. So the experts there have been working um, mainly on the intelligence of the system, um, and and then fundamental to that one is also safety systems within that so the the whole premise of an autonomous vehicle you can get you can get a, a vehicle to move but how do you get it to make the right decisions how do you get it to make safe decisions uh what are the the, the underlying safety systems that you need the redundancy in that system to prevent it failing um, so there's again there's a large level of in terms of the mechanical engineering um, but a lot of that is the kind of the vision processing and the intelligence in the vision processing. So that um, it, it started off as uh, the, sort of the early work was very much kind of analytical vision uh, uh, vision systems, and we're now uh, dominated by machine learning. Uh, so it's, it, it's that's that's the main area for autonomous. Uh, vehicles, but uh, there's lots of other areas, uh, and in including going back to you know the human side is how do humans interact with it. The, mo the most important part of the vehicle, one of the important parts of the vehicle, is interacting with humans outside of the vehicle. How do you, how do they perceive humans um, when they're crossing the road, or or are they going to stand by the, the curb and not cross the road? Um, so again, it's kind of that intelligence, the vision systems, sensors, uh, yeah, lo lots of, again, lots of skills, very, very comparat comparative to almost any of the other areas of, of robotics. Brilliant. Thanks, Duncan. And, and there's a few questions ready have, have come in then, kind of just from people maybe who have just finished their PhDs or are kind of coming towards a kind of point in their lives when they're, they're looking to kind of start trying to get jobs in the industry and, and are asking how they go about it. Do they just, I know, Philippa, you covered this a bit before, you know, do you just ring people up or, you know, how do they actually go about getting a job, you know, where they want to in the industry? Yeah, so, so, so Richard, we're, I suppose we're probably quite an interesting company. Being small, you've got the flexibility. So a lot, a, quite a lot of our engineers actually knocked on the door, and that's the very reason why they're part of the team. They did their research. They went, I really want to work in robotics. CNC robotics looks really cool. They knocked on the door. They went, can I, can I have a job? <laughs> um, we... I, we're a small business and if we've got the ability to do it we go yeah we'll give you a bit of a try and you know they're now part of the team and one of them is our now our automation team leader and you know is you know probably one of the best people I know in the field at, at what he does and, and that came from him knocking the door and not leaving reception I would probably say um not not all businesses work that way but I think you know it, it's it's such a new industry that if you've got passion and tenacity and you're curious I think that will take you a long way and never be afraid to, to, to reach out to people and try and make those opportunities. And if they aren't available, there will be someone else that will give you that, that opportunity. And, and a lot of roles, I think, aren't advertised in a classical way anymore um, because the world is changing really fast. Maybe at some of the larger companies they are, they are, but in smaller businesses, if you want to move out of academia, you've got to kind of put yourself out there, I think, and, and, and really, you know, network and yeah, knock on the door. <laughs> that's that's my advice. No, no, quite, and I think as well, you know, as well as that, as I know, kind of Melanie and Marcus were discussing earlier as well. 
is that, I mean, I, I know we've just hired some developers in uh, at CyberSales and they're, you know, what really stood out for us was people who had actually gone and kind of done things on their own. You know, they'd gone yes. and done their own projects. Yeah. And so they didn't just have the kind of qualifications to, to bring to us, but also these amazing things they'd kind of done themselves, you know. And, and, and so and I, I wonder, kind of Marcus, Melanie, is, is that your experience as well? Yes, I, 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 I would say so. I think that 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 summarizes um, pretty much what, what I think. Some, some, I'm, I'm, I'm rereading this this comment here, which I, I find fascinating because it's a very clever comment, I think. And if I may may, may read it, it, it says, "It sounds like most of the careers on this panel were kind of stumbled into, as opposed to worked intentionally towards over years and degrees." This reminds me a bit of how coding was viewed about 10 to 20 years ago versus now where a degree and strong technical background makes a huge difference. Does this feel somewhat accurate to the general culture of robotics of in the wild west phase? And uh, I think that this is an interesting comment for several reasons. So first of all, the so soft robotics field, for instance, is very young. It is maybe 10 years old in the first soft robotics conferences. I was a PhD student when they really started, which is the IEEE soft robotics conference. Number two, when, so I think it is, is it fair, fairly new in, in soft robotics at least. Then in terms of robotics itself, for instance, in the school where I'm from, we have a department of robotics engineering, which is something that now more universities do and do, but we, we happen to be one of the first, at least in the US. And we offer Bachelor of Science in Robotics, we offer Master of Science in Robotics, and we offer PhDs in Robotics. So the undergrad students that I teach, Control and Perception, are undergrad students who start off after high school with a degree in Robotics. So we're moving towards degrees in Robotics. And we can see that in the US, not only in the US, I believe also in the UK, that there are entire robotics curriculum. And in my opinion, this happens because the robotics has been such a multidisciplinary field, but because it gets so much traction, it deserves its own field by itself. And that is why we now see entire degrees in there. And to give a little bit more uh, advertisement maybe for the UK folks, there is the Edinburgh Center of Robotics, which is an entire center funded uh, by British uh, taxpayers that is just based on robotics. And they just built now a, a new building, I believe, at Harriet Watt, which is going to be uh, um, quite leading in robotics. We also have the EPSERC Center for Doctoral Training in Robotics and Autonomous Systems. So there, are, uh, there is quite a lot of robotics degrees and a lot of um, robotics curriculum now evolving. And these become degrees by themselves. When I did my bachelor degree, that was unheard of, at least where I'm from in Germany. Oh, that's really interesting. I've got Melanie? Um, yeah, I, I uh, completely agree with uh, also with, with what has been been said as well. And also just following up um, um, from um, what Marcus just uh, mentioned as well. It's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting because also, yeah, I think the universities, um, Loughborough University um, now as well, for example, they are trying to um, also take this robotics aspect um, more and more into the curriculum as well. Uh, before that, a few years ago, it wasn't really, um, I think, um, like on their radar or like it, it wasn't just a, a cohesive um, study program um, as, it is, as it is now. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with uh, what has been said. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so uh, something through there from, um... Uh, someone's just saying basically yeah how, how kind of varied the whole in, interdisciplinary that the, the, the industry seems to be and how excited they are about starting a master's that that's absolutely brilliant um uh, we, we've only got kind of um, a couple of minutes left i wonder if if the panelists could just kind of give us a, a, a final bit of advice e of advice each of them really on uh, on how to kind of get into the industry and where they kind of really see it going o over the next few years I, you know, I'll kick off. I, I think that there, there is going to be uh, a growth in the robotics courses uh, and uh, we're certainly involved in, in some areas of defining that course and uh, involved with various universities. Um, but yeah, things like uh, mechatronics are still very important um, and the, the computer science behind that, the, the AI, I think that the, the growth in AI is um, 
is is going to be dominant and that that goes across many areas of autonomy um things like internships are very useful uh and i would say it, within ocado we do kind of struggle with the definitions of some of the jobs so you might you might find um the, the particular expertise is defined in a different way um, but our recruitment team uh, are quite keen to identify somebody for uh, a different role if they've applied to one role um, but don't be afraid to apply to more than one role uh, to try and get your foot in the door as, as we were saying earlier Great, so that, that is really good advice i think it, it really is is that yeah exactly is that you might easily be considered for different roles in the organization and, and kind of don't be shy to put yourself forward really so, um, so, so Richard, in, in the context of, of robotics that, that we play in, so manufacturing in the UK is, has, has got very, very low adoption rates um, and we currently don't even feature on, on the graph. So we rank 24th with a density of 80, 89 units per, per 10,000 employees. You know, it's really, really, really low. And, you know, there is, you know, a, a question and a link to the, the UK productivity challenge. So. You know, we are forecasting and, you know, I think everyone is seeing that there will be a, an acceleration of the adoption of robotics in the UK manufacturing landscape. You know, that is really exciting and also that poses a lot of opportunities because as integrators, so we need talented individuals to join our team to enable us to, to deal with that increased kind of demand um, for kind of the, the types of, of, of robotic systems that manufacturing is going to need. And the government is, you know, supporting and, and continuing to kind of develop its kind of strategy and, and, and plans around that area um, to, to, to help address that. And, and we as industry are, I suppose, working with them to, to try and get what we need, um, even, even if that is a bit challenging. Um, so I think there's a huge amount of opportunities in, in the field that, that I represent. Um, and what advice I would say is be curious, you know, stay curious. Um, and curiosity is just really, really important. And, you know, that's a, a really good thing to keep for the, for the, for the whole of your career um, and will we'll keep you happy. Absolutely. Uh, Melanie? Yeah, so um, also just to, to build up on that a bit. So with the transferable skills, I would also say, um, you know, curiosity, creativity and problem, uh, problem solving are good skills to have, especially for what I'm doing right now. But I think one other important skill is also to, um, you know, to, to like working in a team. Um, because there's also, um, like as a, I think in general, this goes for engineers or scientists, we're not working in isolation as, you know, sometimes we, we see on movies or, um, so we usually work, work in a team. Um, and I think it's really important that you, you know, also reach out to people that you discuss ideas. Um, because also this is how the, the greatest and the craziest ideas actually <laughs> uh, come along. Um, and when it comes to like how I see the trend um, in the future, so I think that, um, or from, from what I, I can see from, from my own research is um, that the robots, um, that the, they will take on in manufacturing, there will be a, um, um, a higher uptake um, in, uh, in manufacturing of, robot, uh, of, of robots uh, or robotics in general um, to also cover the monot uh, monotonous tasks that people are doing um, because these are things um, that the robot can do uh, without tiring, you know, the human uh, basically. But the human then, in turn, will be more responsible for uh, decision making um, um, and tasks. So I, I think we will kind of see a bit of a shift um, uh, there in the future uh, when it comes to that, and at least in manufacturing. Yeah. Brilliant, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and and, and Marcus, lastly. I can really just repeat one more time, get your hands dirty, build stuff, you know, get in touch with people who do robotics, try to work for them. And you will be amazed about the many responses that you will get that are positive. And never forget, one email is really often than that, right? N emails, N has to be equal, to, you know, greater three, I guess. Um, that's usually what happens with people here. Um, don't give up, be um, consistent in your efforts and just do and work on, on stuff. That's really my advice, at least for middle and high school students. 
I, I think that that's really great advice, and you know, and, and just from kind of, just to kind of say again what I was saying in the opening. You know, personally, you know, I, I'm like Philippa, quite new into robotics, and and really, I, I found it to be an incredibly open and welcoming industry. Really, it's kind of really got the feeling, maybe not quite of the wild west, but of something that really kind of is growing and and is kind of going in kind of really interesting directions. And and personally, I've I've found it kind of really welcoming and opening open to work with and. And, and feel that you know that that's a really good as Marcus is saying that it's a really good attitude to take in and and really look to just kind of to start doing stuff really I, I think is often a good way to it and not worry too much about how you're going to be accepted and you know how you're going to get in but just going to get really stuck in as soon as you can and 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 start and, and actually kind of start doing doing things you know and doing is is, is often kind of as important as anything else really um so, and so and one last sentence yeah. um, uh, to Richard right there. Mention that in your in your letter, to, you know, when you apply for colleges, mention that, you know, you have been tinkering in, around with robotics. People will love this stuff. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Very well said. No, thanks, Marcus. Absolutely. So, so we're, we're out of time. So I'd like to kind of really, really thank um, Philippa, Duncan, uh, Melanie and Marcus for being, that was a really, really interesting discussion today. And, and thanks so much for that. Um, Thanks also to the audience and we, we can't see you. We've got we've got no, no idea how many of you are out there or, or, or whether you've enjoyed it. But but again, thanks very, very much for turning up. It's been brilliant. And and just to say, lastly, that kind of leading out of all this, um, you know, please do have a look at kind of UK Res's website. And, you know, there's lots more events coming up over the summer. And we'd really like you to join in with those and, you know, and do get in touch if, if you'd like any more help, basically, uh, kind of accessing the industry and launching your own career into robotics. So many, many thanks. And uh, we hope to see everyone soon. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>